There are a lot of different ways that we can write the equation of a line, and the way that we choose to write our equation is what's known as the form of the line. And there's a lot of different forms for the equation of a line. Um, probably the most popular form is something called slope-intercept form that we probably know pr fairly well. It looks like y equals mx plus b. And it's a great form of a line. It, you can graph lines quickly and easily in this form, and, and it has a lot of benefits and advantages. But it does have one disadvantage I want to talk about. Oh, think about this. What, what do you need to write the equation of a line in slope-intercept form? Well, you need its slope. That's, that's what the m represents. And you need its y-intercept. That's what the b represents. That's why they call it slope-intercept form. So if someone gives you a y-intercept or a place where your line crosses the y-axis and they show you what tilt it has or what steepness it has, then you can draw a line with that y-intercept with the required slope. And then this graph represents this line. And and that, that all, all seems well and good, but what about this? What if someone gives you a slope and the point that they provide you is not necessarily on the y-axis? That's very restrictive. What if they give you a point that's over here, right? Or over here or down here or something like that? Then what do you do? Well, even if they still give you the slope, you know, and let's say your line looks something kind of like this, well, we have no idea where it's crossing the y-axis because the point that they gave us was actually over here. And so you might can plug in the M, but we don't know what the B is. Now there is a way around this, and, and we've done some examples, we've got some videos where we've worked through some problems where we find the slope-intercept form of a line um, given a slope in some random point. But wouldn't it be a lot nicer if there was a form that was ready-made for you to plug in a random point and a slope? And in fact, there is. This is what's known as point-slope form, and that's what I want to talk about in this video. So let's, let's just recap here. Point-slope form. This is going to give us the equation of a line with a slope of m that goes through some random point x1, y1. And that equation looks like this. It's y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. And so basically all you do is you'll take the information, the m and the x1 and the y1, you take them all and you'll stick them in the equation, and the x and the y will actually stay variables but the m and the x1 and the y1 will be the numbers that, that you've been provided. And so it's a great way to write the equation of a line. Now, a lot of times what will happen is that the final answer is often still desired in slope-intercept form just because it's such a popular form and a nice way to write the equation of a line. So what do you do then? Do you, you know, just ditch all of this and forget it? Uh, no, actually you don't. You can actually take a random point in a slope, put it in slope-intercept form, even though that's not the way they want the answer, and then once you have this written in terms of the point-slope form, then you can just do a little algebra to simplify it or rewrite it in slope-intercept form once you're finished. And that's usually a, a quicker route than doing it, as I mentioned earlier, uh, basically from scratch with y equals mx plus b. Usually it's a little faster than that. So let, let's try an example here. Let's see how this works. Here they ask us to find the slope-intercept form of a line. Slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, you recall, of a line that has a slope of 4 that goes through the random point 2, 2, which, by the way, is not on the y-axis. So slope-intercept form, to me, doesn't sound like the best place to start. Now, with that being said, we have two options, and, and really it's your choice. You can either start with slope-intercept form, since that's what they're requesting, a slope-intercept form, and then you know plug in the m, that's the slope of 4, but for this b right here, you're really going to have to work. Um, there's going to be some things, some algebra you're going to have to do to discover the y-intercept because that's not what you were given. Or we could try out our, our new guy, this point-slope form, 
that'll accept any slope and any x y point and and we'd be good to go so uh, so let, let's try it this new way let's let's see how this works let's see if we can fill fill in the blanks with point slope form even though that's not the way they want the final answer let's give it a shot so here I noticed that x1 is 2 and y1 is 2 and the 4 is my m that's that's my slope so I'd have y minus y1 which is 2 equals m which is 4 times the quantity x minus x1 which is also 2 so the x and the y stay variables and the x1 y1 are are 2 and 2 and the slope is 4 so this in some respects is my answer but it's, there's still something a little bit off uh, this is my answer in point slope form and they wanted it in slope intercept form as they often do so we're very close to the finish line we we just need to simplify this guy a little bit just clean it up a little bit so when I say simplify I mean do things like maybe distribute the 4 and we get 4x minus 8 equals y minus 2 and then we'll add 2 to both sides and we'll get y equals 4x minus 6. So this would be our final answer in slope intercept form and this answer is equivalent to the equation that we had in point slope form it's just written in a different form is all so I think you'll find that doing it this way will be a little bit quicker than just starting with y equals mx plus b and doing everything from scratch uh, that way but anyways uh, just in closing point slope form is just a great form of a line if you're provided the slope of the line with some generic point that your line goes through